Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I was doing my morning devotionals and God is pretty amazing. He showed me something that started out with just one verse. And I started doing the study on it and it kind of exploded into a big study. And I wanted to share with you what God showed me. So if you want to turn to Romans chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 13. making sure it's correct, sorry. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he should have, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but it's talking about how Abraham believed and was counted for him for righteousness. And now it's talking about how we get the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for there is no law, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Okay. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Okay, you're saved by God's grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were, who again hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. The point of reading all this far. His faith was imputed to him for righteousness. Okay. Verse 23. Now was not, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us, saved sinners, also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offense and was raised again for our justification. Okay? The whole point of this study is, why is the Godhead a salvation issue? My notes are on the computer. I'm running low on paper and I'm out of black ink. Um, and what I could do is bring this a little closer to me. Um, make it a lot easier. So, why is the Godhead a salvation issue? We're going to find that out in this passage. Okay. If we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Okay. The key word we're going to be focusing on for this study is the Him. Who is the Him talking about? Uh, people will say, well, it's talking about God. God the Father. Uh, we're going to get into that. Okay. But what it's talking about here is... Moses had faith in God's promise, and that faith was counted to him for righteousness, okay? Um, not that he was righteous, but the faith he had was counted to him for righteousness. Today, when we repent, believe, and God saves us, Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us. Remember the Bible says, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They've all together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. You need Jesus' righteousness to go to heaven. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Who raised Jesus from the dead? Okay. Now, if you want to turn to Acts 4.10... We're going to turn to Acts 4.10, which is back. Now there's tons of passages saying that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. 
But we are going to go to Acts 4, verse 10. Okay. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before here before you whole. Okay? What does this passage say? It says that God the Father, that's who God's reference there, has raised him from the dead, raised Jesus from the dead. Remember 1 Corinthians 8, 6, for there's but one God, capital G God, the Father. Okay? God here, and I know they're interchangeable, there's times God, can, the word God, capital G God, can be a reference to Jesus Christ. But, but that's a whole other study that I've already talked about. But God here is a reference to the Father. It says here that the Father raised Jesus from the dead. So you look up there at Romans 4, ch chapter 4, verse 24, and you say the Him there is God the Father. And I know a lot of people are getting into this now saying, so you're trying to add to the gospel, you're trying to add to the plan of salvation. We're going to get to that. But right here, what it's talking about, it, they're saying the hymn there is talking about God the Father. You'd be correct. But turn to John 2, chapter 2, verse 13. Let's turn back to John chapter 2, verse 13. making sure. There's times my notes are off and I get the wrong thing. So John chapter 2 verse 13, and the Jews Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold ox and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the ch changers money and overthrew the tables. And said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. It's funny that it says, not funny, but it's not a coincidence that it says that. And then there's another passage that talks about how uh, the lost world, you know, false converts and stuff like that, how they're going to make merchandise of you. Your body's a temple for the Holy Ghost. It's not a coincidence. Verse 17, And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house had eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? They're always asking Jesus, Who gave you this authority? Who gave you this authority? Verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. You're saying, well, what? It's, it's saying a temple, it's saying a temple. Let's keep going. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. Okay, past prophecy that Jesus would die and be rose again from the third day. Jesus Christ is claiming that he raised himself from the dead. So who's the he there a reference to in Romans 24? Jesus. Now the Trinity people are starting to get all upset. It can't be God the Father and Jesus because they're two separate persons. Well, let's keep going here. Romans 8, 9. Let's turn to Romans 8, 9. Is that correct? No, something I did wrong. Give me a second. Good thing I have the computer up and running. Sometimes I just get excited. No, Romans 8 9. I'm still on Acts. Eh, thought I flipped far enough. Romans 8 9. Romans 8 verse 9. Let's get my notes back up. 8 verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. It's a capital S Spirit, which is a reference to the Holy Ghost. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
that's a good verse proving that the Holy Spirit is not only God the Father, but also Jesus Christ. They are one and the same. There aren't two separate spirits. Okay? Capital S Spirit, always reference to the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, and if Christ be in you, now it's Christ that's in you, not the Holy Spirit. Another proof text that Jesus is the Holy Spirit. The body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raiseth up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. This right here is saying that the Holy Spirit raised Jesus up from the dead. So who is the He a reference to? And Romans chapter 4, verse 24. The Holy Spirit. Right now people are, like I said, those trained people don't like the Godhead. They hate the Godhead. I don't care if they, oh, they're one and the same. They're already trying to do away with the Godhead. I've shown evidence of that. They're trying to say it's separate from the Trinity. We believe in the Trinity and it's separate from the Trinity. Okay? So we've, I've shown you evidence that God the Father raised Jesus up from the dead. Jesus raised himself up from the dead, and the Holy Spirit raised himself up from the dead. And as we read in Romans 4, you have to believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If you wanted Jesus' righteousness imputed to you. You say, well, that's adding to the gospel. We're going to get to that. Okay. Now, what we're going to get to is something that people don't like. Nobody's been able to refute this. Over here. Person. We're going to get into person again. I'm always pushing this. Okay, the Bible definition, and we've proved it, we still haven't finished the New Testament. We're getting into the New Testament on our word studies with person. But the definition of person, okay, an individual human being consisting of body and soul. We apply this word to living beings only. So a person, to be considered a person, you have to have a body, you have to have a soul, and you have to have a spirit. And we're going to prove here that Jesus Christ is the only person of the Godhead. So who's the he there in Romans chapter 4, verses 24? Who's the he there? Kind of jumping the gun here, okay? Who's the he? The person, Jesus Christ. Person, body, soul, and spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Holy Spirit is the spirit. And Jesus is the body. Body, soul, and spirit. Who raised Jesus from the dead? The person, Jesus Christ. So I'm jumping the head a little bit. So, go to Job 13.7. Turn to Job 13.7. Thirteen seven. Will ye speak wickedly for God, and talk deceitfully for him? Will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? Jesus is our uh, intercessory. Uh, there's one mediator, mediator. There's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. This person reference is talking about Jesus. But notice it says his person. God's person. That's who the his God the Father, and person there is a reference to Jesus Christ. That's important, because we're going to get to another verse that people try to say that person, the word person is a reference to God the Father. No, it isn't. But let's keep going here. So that was Job. Person there is a reference to Jesus Christ. Matthew 27, let's go to cha Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See to it. Okay. Who's he talking about here? Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ is the only person of the Godhead. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 2.10. 2 Corinthians... gets hard to turn because I've got a lot of paper in here marking spots that I'm doing things in because there's only actually two bookmarkers that came with this book, like the little strings. All right, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 10. Okay. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Once again, whose person a reference to? Jesus Christ. I hope it's starting to sink in here that so far, the only person of the Godhead, it's not God in three persons, there's only one person of the Godhead. The only person of the Godhead, uh, you have God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God the Father, and you have the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit of God. Out of those three, only one person is ever referred to, from person, only one of them, is ever referred to as a person. Okay, Last time that Jesus is called a person, referenced as a person, Hebrews 1, 3. People like to fight over this one, but like I said, if you remember what we read in Job 13, 7, his person, talking about Jesus Christ. But in Hebrews 1, when it says his person, no, 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 that's talking about God the Father. Uh, no, it isn't, and I'll show you why. Hebrews 1, 3. Verse 1, verse 3. Okay. Who, being the brightness of His glory and the express, expressed image of His person and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now there's a few things in there. First, we're talking about person there. The image of His person. Who's the image, the invisible image of God? Jesus Christ. I mean, who's the image of the invisible God? I think I said it right. It's Jesus Christ. His person, the word person here, is a reference to Jesus Christ. But if you also look at this, Jesus being the brightness of His glory, I didn't write this down, but I read it when I did this study, there's a passage that said it was the glory of God that raised Jesus from the dead. And you keep reading, it says here, the word of His power. Uh, it also talks in another verse how the power of God rose Jesus from the dead. What if that power was the Word? Okay. Jesus spoke, you know, because we said the study, the person of Jesus Christ rose himself from the dead. Because the person of Jesus Christ includes God the Father, the soul, Jesus the body, and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. All three of them in the person of Jesus Christ raised him from the dead. Okay. Colossians 2.8 why is this so hard for people to believe? Turn to Colossians 2.8. Okay. Colossians is so small, it's so easy to pass Colossians. Okay, uh, Colossians 2.8. 2 verse 8. It's a memory verse, okay? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the rudiments of the world, wait a minute, let's get back to reading it. After the traditions of men, that comes first. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. I'm always working on my memory verses. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is the only one called a person of the Godhead because in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay. Jesus, I'll, I want to skip ahead a little bit. Jesus is the person of the Godhead. It is not God in three persons. God the Father is not a person. He doesn't have a body, soul, and spirit of his own. The Holy Ghost is not a person. He does not have a body, spirit, uh, was it? body soul, and spirit of his own. People will grab the word he and say that means person. No, it does not. Okay. He is masculine. It means male. Uh, he can mean a person, it can be referring to a person, he can be referring to a man or a boy, but he can also, 
If you have a dog, how many people have heard? I got a dog named Victoria. You guys seen it, seen her in some of my videos. Oh, you see what I just said? Her. You've seen her in some of my videos. Well, that must mean Victoria is a person. My dog's a person. No, a dog doesn't have a soul, just a body and a spirit. The Bible proves that. Okay, you can use he or her to show masculine and feminine, and, it's, and that's the whole the whole point of it. Okay, you know. Um, the mother church, the mother of harlots, talking about the Catholic Church. It's talking about the false religion, right? not a person. Now that within that false religion, there's tons of people, persons. But you understand what I'm saying? They'll use that to attack it. Uh, the only person of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. The Bible only calls Jesus Christ a person. Now. Once again, people are still jumping, if you've made it this far, keep jumping ahead. What does that have to do with salvation? You're adding to Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15.1. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15.1. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. What's part of the memory, I believe? We just read in Romans chapter 4, verse 24. Always have to go up, make sure I'm saying it. Romans 4, chapter 24. Okay. Where he's talking about that, and he said the gospel as a whole. You go through the whole Romans, people like to skip things. The gospel, but here's the gospel. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. What did we read up there? Romans 24, uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 24. We believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offense. Would this just say right here that He died for our sins? That's our offense. And was raised again for our justification. Talking about death, burial, and resurrection. Died for our sins. Now, why is that so important to believe on Him who hath raised Jesus our Lord from the dead? When you come to the Lord for the gospel, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is God. He's God manifest in the flesh. Okay, Jesus raised, the person of Jesus Christ raised Jesus from the dead. He said he raised himself, but the person, all three did, raised Jesus from the dead, proving that Jesus is God. Only God's blood can wash your sins away. Um, feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Only the blood of a righteous, perfect man Perfect sacrifice can wash your sins away. And in order for Jesus to be perfect, He has to be God. Remember, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Okay. So, like I said, does it have something to do with the gospel? It has everything to do with the gospel. If you don't believe Jesus Christ is God the Father, you don't believe He's God. Therefore, His blood can do nothing for you. You believe he's a lowercase g God, one of three gods that make up one big God. He's the second member of the Godhead. That's the Trinity. Now, that when it says it's believing in vain there, I disagree with Brother Brian. I do disagree with Brother Brian sometimes. He believes that the great delusion... Uh, let me not get ahead of myself real quick. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. We're already in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, over to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Lest she have believed in vain. What's that belief in? I believe it's the Trinity. That's the belief in vain. You believe in a false Jesus, a lowercase g God Jesus, because you don't believe in the Godhead, you believe in the Trinity. These people that just vehemently stand for the Trinity, why do we say they're lost? Because they're not believing that Jesus is God, fully and completely. The Jesus they believe in, his blood can do nothing for them. 
the true Jesus of Scripture, who is the person of the Godhead, He can save you. He can wash your sins away. His righteousness can be imputed to you. Are you following along, hopefully? Okay. So 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Let's go to 3. We'll start in 3. But if our gospel be hid, remember what 1 Corinthians 15.1-4 said about believing in vain, if you don't keep in memory the gospel that we preach? If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. People who reject the Godhead for the Trinity, I don't care what they say. Oh, they're one and the same. We've proven through Scripture time and time and time again that the Godhead is not the same as the Trinity. You talk to some of these people and they believe in the Godhead, but they refuse to give up Trinity terms. There's some people who believe in the Godhead and when they get to heaven, I believe they'll get to heaven, they're going to be corrected by God. And they're going to wish, not wish, but they're going to be corrected. They'll know better. But you talk to them, they don't believe God the Father has a body, soul, spirit of his own. They don't believe Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. They believe Jesus Christ is the body. God the Father is the soul, and the Spirit is the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit, Holy Ghost. They believe this, but they'll still say God in three persons. And we show them... From Scripture, this is the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It's based off Scripture. I'm doing the word study on it, proving that person is always a reference to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. So you talk to them, and they still use Trinity terms. God the, uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Bible only says there's one God, the Father. Only God the Father is referenced once in the Bible, and it's saying capital G, God the Father. There is no God the Son, rep those, that statement made in the Bible. God the Holy Spirit, not found in the Bible. They'll still use these terms, but they believe in it. I'm talking about people that vehemently stand for the Trinity. They won't have anything to do with truth, proper definition, the Word of God. They won't have anything to do with the truth. Okay? This is who they're ta it's talking about. We preach the gospel of the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. Biblical repentance. Godly sorrow for sinning against Him. You come to God saying, I'm a sinner and I've sinned against God. And Lord, I'm so sorry for sinning against you. I'm going to hell. I'm a mess. I'm going to hell and I deserve to go to hell. That's true biblical repentance. And people don't like that today. They like unrighteousness. They don't like righteousness. God's righteousness. They don't want Jesus' righteousness imputed to them. All right? And the belief in the real Jesus Christ, who's God the Father, Jesus Christ, and Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When you first get saved... God will reveal this to you later, but what He's going to show you with the Gospel is you're going to believe that Jesus Christ is God. And it was God's blood that was shed on Calvary. And only God's blood, Jesus' blood, can wash your sins away. That's going to happen when you get saved. Before you get saved, when you believe, that's what you're going to believe. Okay? Verse 4. Now, why, we just read here, but if our God be, the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. They don't want anything to do with the true gospel. They don't want anything to do with the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. Jesus of the Godhead. Jesus who is the person of the Godhead. Verse 4, In whom the lowercase g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, like we talked about earlier, should shine unto them. So you have the lowercase g God of this world blinding people. I did a study recently um, showing that over 50% of the world, over 50% of the population of the world believes in a Jesus Christ. Not the Jesus Christ, a Jesus Christ. So right here, the blindness that I believe it's talking about is he's gotten people out there, and if you're false, and you're still standing for the Trinity, or you're just rejecting Jesus Christ as being God, because there's those religions, they believe in Jesus, a Jesus, but they don't believe he's God. You need to repent, okay? You need to believe in the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. But the blindness that I believe is talking about there is Satan is getting people to believe in a false Jesus. A Jesus Christ. A lowercase g, 
Jesus Christ. There's not three capital G gods that make up one large capital G God. The Trinity teaches three lowercase g gods. And it teaches that Jesus Christ is a lowercase g God. And the three lowercase g gods make up the one, because there's only one capital G God. Okay? That's what they teach. So who's the lowercase g God that their Jesus is? What do we read there? In whom the lowercase g, God of this world. They worship Satan. Satan is the foundation of the Trinity. Always has been. But like I said, you talk to some people and they don't believe in the Trinity. They believe in the Godhead of Scripture. Peter Ruckman believed in the Godhead of Scripture. He used Trinity terms. Um, there are some other people that they prove that people come out and say, these people that are Bible believers that you say are saved, they believe in the Trinity. But it's coming out and they're proving that when they actually preach what they believe about the Trinity, they're actually believing the Godhead. They have just fallen into the trap of the traditions of men and, well, the people in the... My parents called it the Trinity, I might as well call it Trinity. My pastor calls it the Trinity, I might as well call it the Trinity. It's just something that's handed down. It's tradition. They've fallen into the trap of tradition. They need to go back to the Bible. Okay? Now, this is where I, to, I said earlier, this is where I disagree with Brother Brian. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, I was watching an old video, so he might have changed his stance, because, like I said, he's not above correction. Go ahead. There's 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Okay, this is talking about the catching away of the body of Christ. It is. Uh, the Holy, we're here, the body of Christ is preventing the Antichrist from showing up. And we have to leave in order for him to show up. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The mystery of iniquity. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wickedness be revealed. Okay, the, verse 7 talks about the, the mystery of, the in, of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of Antichrist is here today. Let's keep going. And then shall that wickedness be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of the unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. We're showing them truth. The Godhead is truth. The Trinity is false. The real Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. Not a third of God. Not the second member of God, of the Godhead. Okay. Where do we leave off? The truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I've been doing a lot of studies showing that um, people, the number one reason why people reject Jesus Christ, see, there's another area where I'm starting to learn that I, I disagree with some people, Brother Brian, he says that the number one reason people go to hell is self-righteousness. It's a half-truth. I'm not saying I disagree with that 100%. But what leads to self-righteousness? Worldly sorrow. I proved this in another study. Worldly sorrow leads to self-righteousness. Why? Because it has to. You want to keep your sin, so how do you justify keeping your sin? You become self-righteous. I'm a good person. Yeah, I might do this over here, but, you know, I don't do that over there. Well, it depends on how you look at it. I don't see it as being that, that bad. I'm still a good person even though I do it. It's not that bad. Or, I don't believe it's wrong. Self-righteousness comes from worldly sorrow. They want to hold on to the world, and they don't want to let it go. The world's way is sin. They love their sin. What does it just say right there? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I disagree with Brother Brian. 
And like I said, if you've changed his stance and I missed that, I just remember doing some old studies like uh, the um, Revelations uh, expository studies. He used to believe it's the Antichrist coming and that's the strong delusion they're going to worship him as Jesus Christ. Then his stance changed to it's the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. The delusion is they're getting people to believe in the post and mid-trib that the body of Christ goes to the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe it goes a step further back. It's today. The strong delusion is here today. What's that strong delusion? People are getting prepared to worship the Antichrist today. The average Jesus that people preach and believe in, like I said, over half the population of the world believes in a Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the Jesus Christ of Scripture, the Jesus Christ of the Godhead, person of the Godhead, fully and completely God. They don't believe in the Jesus Christ. They believe in a Jesus Christ. And that a Jesus Christ they believe in, whether they believe he's really God or the God, uh, Jesus of the Trinity, the Jesus that's okay with sin, who's okay with unrighteousness, who's okay with being carnal. I'll be doing another study coming up on that. Can a Christian be carnal? Um, that's their Jesus. That's the Antichrist. Satan is preparing people today to worship him in the time of Jacob's trouble. And God's letting it happen. Why is God letting it happen? We already read there because they believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But why is God, I feel God has no sympathy for these people. He's not going, oh man, I have to do this. No, no sympathy. Why? Let me give you a good example of what's happening today, Instruction of Righteousness, uh, Zechariah chapter 7. We're going to read Zechariah chapter 7. I read this, this is another spot in my, uh, my reading. Okay. Zechariah chapter 7. And this is why I'm getting to the point where I don't have sympathy for them either. I, my love for them is preaching them the truth, the lost people, the world, our true love for the lost world is preaching the real Jesus Christ, the true plan of salvation, letting them know we want to see you get saved. But when they flat out reject the real Jesus Christ, want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, we brush the dust off our feet and we move on. Move on to the next city is the <laughs> instruction of righteousness. So let's start uh, chapter 17. We're going to read the whole chapter real quick. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chelsea. When they had sent unto the house of God, Shizur, 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 I can't even pronounce that, Shizri, Riz, Rezer, Shizrizer, and Regimelech, and their men to to pray before the Lord, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself, as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fast, fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye all fast unto me, even to me. Now this can be compared to the New Testament where it says where people are telling God, did we not cast devils out in thy name? Did we not fast in thy name? Pray in thy name? And he looks at him and goes, depart from me, ye cursed in everlasting fire. I never knew you. So I'm kind of probably jumping ahead a little bit. But all these people are doing all this stuff. Let's keep going. And when ye did eat and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? See, all those people that did those things today, casting out devils, speaking in tongues, bapti physical baptism, when it's spiritual, the physical is just an outward show, but they're telling you you have to do it to be saved. These Babel buildings, I went to these Babel buildings, I went to church, and I helped out, I mowed lawns, I did the bake sale, I did the car wash sale, I was on the worship team where we played satanic style music. Okay, I kept this building up, I did all this for you. What were they doing it for? Themselves. Because it's not found in Scripture. Verse 7. Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophet, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities therefore round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? 
I have to throw this in real quick. Today, there is casting out devils today, but how do you do it? You preach the gospel. You preach the gospel to somebody, and they get saved, and if they have a devil in them, he's gone. You preach the gospel, you preach Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion to every man his brother. This is what God's telling them to do. They were doing all this other stuff for themselves. Now God's saying, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? And show mercy and compassion to every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of your imagine evil against his brother in your heart. I've always taught today, salvation is about the heart, as far as God looks at the heart. Did you truly repent? Did you believe in the real Jesus Christ? Did you confess both in prayer? And was that confession heartfelt? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Did you call upon the name of the Lord? Did you ask God to save you? When you ask God to save you, God goes back, okay, let me look at his heart. Is he genuine? Was his repentance in his heart? Was his belief in his heart? Real Jesus Christ, when he made his confession, was it heartfelt? Then God saves you. Okay. We preach the true plan of salvation. We preach the real Jesus Christ of Scripture to all these false converts out there. We preach them to the lost people out there, but we also preach it to a lot of the false converts out here. Out there. What's their attitude to absolute truth? But they refused to hearken and pull away their shoulders and stop their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came, as, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. We're going to stop there. What was their reaction? La 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 la. What's the action of these people today when we try to preach the true gospel? When we try to preach the Godhead, which is in Scripture, the true biblical Godhead, the true Jesus Christ, the person of the Godhead, what's the reaction? La, 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 la. Don't talk to me. I don't want to hear it. I don't talk to me. I don't want to hear it. That's the reaction. They don't want to hear absolute truth. So when we read over here that God gives them strong delusion, that they all... That, uh, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in righteousness. God will let them believe in the wrong Jesus Christ, the Antichrist, Satan. He'll let them do it. Why? Because that's their attitude. Okay? Their hearts, they harden their hearts. A lot of their hearts are hardened. I'm not saying it's beyond salvation, they can't get saved. I know a lot of people that believed in the false Jesus Christ, an antichrist, Satan, they are worshipping Satan as Jesus Christ. I know a lot of people who have come to the real Jesus Christ, who have truly repented, believed in the real Jesus Christ, confessed both in prayer and asked God to save them. You want to know one of the biggest people, the biggest frauds and fakes as a Christian that I've ever come across before they got saved? You're looking at them. Biggest fake and fraud. I love the Jesus of this world, the lowercase g God of this world. He's okay with my sin. I can do whatever I want. Now, we had good mortals, and there's some things we shouldn't have done. They're wicked. But that was us going, well, man says we shouldn't do this. But when I did it, I wasn't sorry to God. I didn't have godly sorrow. I was sorry if somebody caught me doing it because of how they would look at me. Not what God sees, but what man sees. But for the most part, I could live however I wanted. The Jesus I worshipped was okay with sin. He had, he, had, he had tolerance of sin, basically. He didn't have a zero tolerance of sin. He wasn't hardcore on unrighteousness. He wasn't hardcore on, hey, change life, a new birth. I could say I'm a Christian and look like the world, act like the world, and laugh at the world's jokes. I could live however I want. I can live spiritually however I want. I can be part of whatever religion, religious group I want to be around. Okay, if I want to have a lot of hate, I can believe, like hating somebody, I can believe like the Steve Anderson camp. 
and they have hate for the Jews. I want to have hate for someone. I just got all this hate built up in me. And the Bible says, you're not to hate your enemies, you're to love your enemies. We're not to hate the people of Israel, we're to pray for them. We're not to hate the lost. True love for the lost, like I said, is preaching the gospel to them. We're not to hate our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're to love them. Okay? But you have someone come along, I just want all this hate, I want all this hate. And Satan goes, uh, you see that Steve Anderson over there? He preaches a good Jesus. He preaches me as Jesus. Oh, I mean, I mean, he preaches a Jesus. You might like that Jesus. He's okay with hate. Right? Well, I don't want to repent and, you know, I just want to waste time with prayer. Well, you know that Robert Breaker? He doesn't believe in prayer. Oh, you know that Edward P.F.? He teaches a Jesus that's okay with not repenting. You don't have to repent. That's what's going on in the world. Why is the Godhead so important today? Because the true Jesus Christ that died on the cross is God manifest in the flesh. Fully Completely, totally, God. You believe the Trinity, hardcore, then you don't believe in Jesus Christ, God manifests in the flesh. You believe in Satan. It's that simple. Thank you for watching.